Hello everyone, Zane here, welcome to another Final Fantasy XIV video. Today I want to talk about the Tombstone event from the Moogles. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than we known from before. So this is going to be from January 30th all the way up to March 11th. So the first thing you want to do is talk to the Moogle just like before. This time, you're going to be getting what is called the Magpendium. Now this is going to be basically like Wondrous Tales, except we have standard objectives which is like before we have weekly now which is going to be different from everybody so some people might get eaten some people might get crystal tower some people might get dungeons but this is going to be different for everybody and it's going to reset on the sixth and also we'll let you know when mini mock challenge is going to be for everybody everybody should have the same thing and you can either pick fates or triple triad i don't know if this is going to be different when it resets but right now we have Calusia or Lakeland, Five Fates, or Triple Triad with Fufu Lupa in Western Thetaland. This will give you 10 Tombstones. The Weekly will give you 20. Now the Ultimog is going to be for everybody, and this is going to be once per event. This is going to give you 50 Tombstones for getting 8,000 points in one single ocean finish, uh, fishing voyage. This is not as hard as you might think, especially if you are high leveled or have good gear. If you're low level, like starting at level 1, you might have a hard time getting this. But this is going to be, like I said, 50 tombstones. Now, standard objectives, which can be done as many times as you like per day. You have the Sunken Temple, Cutter's Cry, this Mile Darkhold for 3 tombstones each, Mer Meridium, 4, and Praetorium, 7, Stone Vigil Heart, and Sastasha, 4 each. Porta Decamana, 3, War and Triad, 2 each. Crystal Tower, three each. And then you have Eden, all the way through, two each. PvP, depending if you want to lose, three to five. And then we have Gates now, which is one to ten, depending on which uh, gate you're doing. So Cliffhanger can give you one to three. Air Force One, one to four. Leap of Faith, one to four. Any way the wind blows, one to eight. And the Slice is right, one to ten. Obviously, if you fail halfway through, you'll get Tombstones, depending on your progress. These here, if you get as many points, will differ, and depending on how many of uh, the Cactar statues you get, will differ. This one, I assume, if you don't reach the top, you'll get less. And Ocean Fishing, at the standard, is get 1,200 points, which is something that anybody can do, even at level 1. And this is going to be for 5 Tombstones each. So, you have your total here, if you want to look, and then, of course, access the special site. So we have part 1, and part 2 will most likely be closer to the Dawn Trail release. Now, the rewards are lackluster, unfortunately. So at 100, you got the Mamashiba Nekuchief, which I already got myself. The Antelope Doe Horn is also from Ishgar Restoration, that's going to be 50. The Titania Barding is going to be 50. Modern Legend Hairstyle, 50. The Snowflake Minion, which also is from Eureka. Pagos, 50. The Dalmel Whistle, also from Ishgar Restoration. Ultima Horns is from the Support Fate in Azasla, or you guys can get them here. Decisions from Omega. Scroll, 30. Something I don't have. Twilight over Thanalan, 30. The maps that give you automatic portals is going to be for 30. Or, yeah, 30. Gives you two each. So they can be stacked, but you can't trade them. This is going to be from the Kobold's Beast Tribe. That's 30. I think this is Leviathan's Mount. Or Shiva's, I don't remember. Rose Liner is going to be from Ravana. Legendary Fife is going to be from Shinryu Extreme. This is a perfect time and perfect way to get your MGP Platinum cards for 50,000 MGP. So if you guys want anything MGP related, this is the best way to get it for 30. Here's some housing items. We got the back bar, pixie apple baskets, bar rack. We have the body pieces from PvP for striking, maiming, and fending. You have some cards. These are going to be for 15 and 20. The cards 10, 10, 7, 7, and minions. These are going to be for 7. Music 7. And these stupid things here, which are worthless, for 1. All right. And you cannot sell them. So those are the rewards. I really wish that they would add in more. 
items for the 100 slot, but I guess we can't uh, ask for more than that. So hopefully in the second part of this, they'll bring back the Inferno jacket, which I think a lot of people would definitely benefit from than some stupid neckerchief. All right, but that's all the rewards for that. Now, for ocean fishing, you're gonna come to Limbs of Limits' upper deck or lower deck, and you're gonna come right here to the dock. Now, this is going to be different depending on your time zone. The East Coast is going to be at odd hours. The West Coast should be even hours. But check the NBC that's right here to check what your departure time for your time zone is going to be. And it will be at least 15 minutes after the hour before the queue pops automatically. But because so many people are doing it, it will pop immediately. The more people on your boat, the better chances of you getting that 8,000 point objective. And also the faster way to get the spectral currents where the most of the points will come from, which I will be explaining a little bit in a little bit. So here at the docks in Limsa Lamensa, this is the NPC you're going to be talking to. So view sailing schedule. And you can see here for me, it's five, seven, nine, eleven, the odd hours of the day. You have two routes, the indigo and the ruby. The ruby is not available unless you have Stormblood unlocked. So you'll be doing the indigo if you're not the ruby route if you are in Stormblood. I would say the ruby route is the most common one that people do to get this. So choose that one if you can. Now, over here is where you will get the bait. So you have ragworm, krill, plump worm, and versatile lures will also work. But these three here is what you're going to be using to get most of the fish in all level one. Now, in order to unlock ocean fishing, you must do the quest, all the fish in the sea. This is only unlocked after you have done the first quest as a fisher. So this is all level one stuff. All right. So that is how basically you queue up for the ocean fishing. So now we're going to go inside and I'll explain to you exactly what the spectral current is all about and some tips on how to get some points as well. So we're using the Ruby C route to do this example. So what you're trying to do is cause the spectral current to come out by catching the spectral fish. It's not a hundred percent trigger, but there's a good 50 50 chance. There is dolphins that can pop up that will give you a buff to increase your chances of triggering this effect. So during the event, you'll have an increased rate of catching the fish and also the points will be enormous. So ultimately what you want to do is find the fish that is going to give you the most points. So in this case, it's going to be the lobsters to give you around 83 for average size. If you get large, you'll get more points. If you use double or triple hook, depending if you have those available, you can get over a thousand each time because triple hook can give you seven lobsters at one time. Because you're trying to get as many points as humanly possible. Because when you get to the end, you get bonuses, which will basically give you an increase to whatever your score is to make getting that 8,000 much, much easier. So when you catch a large fish when you're fishing, you will get Angler's Art. This is going to help you regenerate your GP when you're using Thalic's Favor. So here I use Triple Hook on the Lobsters and I get over a thousand points. And then you also get Angler's Art depending on how many fish that you caught. So I ended up getting seven stacks of Angler's Art. So I'm able to get back with Thalic's Favor. Also make sure you use your High Cordial like I did. So sometimes you might not get the same fish. Sometimes you might, but it's basically going to be RNG. Here I ended up getting the Octopus instead of the lobster so i kind of took a hit in points but 400 is also very good so when the spectral current ends the box to the right will change colors and then the spectral current will dissipate if you don't get it in the first area it will be double on the next so once you have gone through all three zones in the voyage you will then stock up your points and get your bonuses and then get your grand total and with your tombstones you also get scripts as well All right, so here is the results of this voyage. So I ended up getting almost 6,000 points. Here are all the bonuses, which gave me plus 90%, which gave me a grand total of 11,000 points. And these are all the scripts that I got. So there you go. And that's how you guys basically get 8,000 points in ocean fishing. 
So basically, that's how ocean fishing works. Now, if you're looking for the compendium without going to the Moogle, it's going to be under duty, under collections. And then, you can basically put it on your hotbar. So if you're on controller, easy access. Now, if you're going to be doing dungeon runs with Blue Mage, the easiest ones are going to be Carter's Cry and this mild Darkhold. Cutter's Cry after the first boss, you have, I think, two to three rooms where you can just skip everything and go straight for the portal to get to the next floor. And with this mild Darkhold, you can grab everything up to the first boss and then stand in the light of the crystal and basically ultra vibrate and ram's voice everybody to death. And then after that, the next set of mobs, you can actually wall to wall pull to the next boss and do the same thing there. And then the final part of that part of the dungeon should be pretty simple to go through. You will have a barrier after the second boss, but it's just, you know, Ram's voice, ultra vibrates them all to death and you're good to go. And you basically will spam that for three tombstones. Now, if you're going to be doing the warring triad, I would honestly would go with Zervan because Zervan can be Zerg down almost to death before he pops out of his containment bay. So if you want, you can do Zervan pretty quickly with a bunch of blue mages for two tombstones a piece. And as for everything else, it's going to be up to you. But uh, yeah, those are my choices. The gates, they're going to be a little bit harder to do because they only spawn during certain time periods of the day. But if you guys want to do that and also get some NGP at the same time, that's also good for you. If you're trying to get your Hitting Gorge achievements for the mounts and all that, probably the best thing to do is do this as well. This, this usually doesn't get done outside of the event. And also make sure you do ocean fishing every single odd hour to get five each, which also can help you level up your fisher, as well as get those minions achievements and, of course, the shark mount. But that's going to be my opinion on what to do to get these fast after the weekly and, of course, the once per event is over with. So good luck with that, and I wish you all the best. And that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new for more Final Fantasy XIV content and help with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to support the channel even further, consider becoming a YouTube member or a Patreon supporter. The link for that will be in the description down below, as well as the link to my Discord channel. I also want to give a huge shout out to all my Patreon and YouTube members. So until next time, make sure you're walking in the glorious light of Lord Bahamut, and always remember to keep forging. Ahead. Take care.